Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm working on a landscape from Iceland, which frankly, we just took a lot of landscapes. That's what you do in Iceland. So I've got a lot of workflow kind of videos, but this is one where I've got a single exposure and I really want it to pop. And one of the key things I like to do in those scenarios is use HDR merge on a single exposure to really help me get the thing kind of going. So here's the photo, slightly dark, slightly longish exposure, 1.6 seconds. And it was just a beautiful canyon. What I want to do is start by just dragging this over here to HDR merge. And even though it's a single exposure, of course, it'll create an HDR, which is not a true HDR, but it basically applies that tone mapping algorithm to the single exposure, which gives it a nice bit of pop, helps you get that photo kind of going and give it a little bit of drama, for lack of a better word, to really help me amp up the overall look of the image. Okay, so now I have my base image here, which I think looks a lot better. It's got a lot more kind of umph to the photo. I've also applied noiseless AI and removed spots, but other than that, I've done no edits. That's the photo after going through HDR Merge as a single exposure. But what I want to do now is get into develop and start making some adjustments so I can really refine the light and the look overall of this image. So it basically comes out looking the way I want it to look, right? Which is frankly kind of the point of editing, I guess, is you're trying to create something that you want to create. I'm going to go ahead and apply adjustments here. I think that's looking pretty good. I actually am going to lift the white. And I like to do that when I have a lot of moving uh, water or waterfalls, things like that. And overall temperature, I'm going to drop that a little bit as well. So that's what my image started like before I got into develop. And there it is now. So I feel like I'm kind of getting there, but I've got a number of things I want to do. The next thing is I like to smooth out those skies. And so this is where Sky AI comes in perfectly handy. Just go into Mask AI and did identifies the objects. I'm going to go ahead and choose Sky and you will see there it is. The mask has applied itself to the sky and my adjustment, which is a negative 56 on Structure AI, basically just smoothing that out a little bit. You probably can't even tell. But now I want to go in and I want to apply some positive structure. And so in this case, I'm going to go to about 50. Structure, as you can see, it really lifts the exposure and gives it a nice kind of crunch. And I always do my fist. I don't know why. It's just a weird habit. I'm always like, give it a little crunch. Uh, but what I want to do is paint that in select because I don't want that all over the photo. I'm going to come in and just paint that onto some of these rocks, a little bit of that grass, maybe go over here some as well. I want to get that big rock there on the left, touch up a little bit there. Then I'm going to shrink my mouse and I'm going to paint these rocks in the river just because I want to give them a little oomph as well. So my mask looks something like that. And if I show you the before and after on structure, there it is. You can see a little bit darker and now it's a little bit brighter. And of course, it's got a little bit of that crunch in it. Now, one of the things in this photo that I don't really love a whole lot is some of the color. And so whenever I want to kind of play around with colors, I go into HSL in the color tool and I'm going to start in the yellow hue and I'm going to make that a little bit more kind of closer to orange, really. So something more about like that. And then I'm going to go into the saturation of the yellow and I want to reduce that a bit because I feel like it's just a bit too much. I want to make that a little bit more muted. So maybe about like that. So if you look at the before, it's kind of quite a bit yellow yellow green and now it's a little bit more muted in fact I think that's a little bit too much I'm going to pull that back a little bit on some of the saturation and I want to check the uh, hue again and see if there's any adjustments there you could go quite orange and make it look like more of a fall image and technically it was fall when we were there but I don't really want to overdo it let me reset that to zero I just want to check this out I recommend taking your time and kind of slowly moving the hues around kind of rolling that gently for lack of a better word until you get to about where you think you want to be I think something about like that is uh what I'm looking for. So overall, my color adjustments have done from that to that on the uh, on the grasses there. And now I want to use a tool which is really fun to use on landscapes, and that's mystical. And that's just because it adds this nice little kind of moody touch with a little bit of contrast across the entire image. There it is before, and there it is now. I love to use that, but I uh, I see that the highlights are, are still a little bit bright for me. So I'm going to go back to develop, and I do this a lot as I'm kind of moving around within a photo. I'll just kind of bounce between various tools and filters and then sometimes go back to develop to do something. I'm going to pull those highlights down just a little bit, but I want to bring up the whites a little bit. And that's really helping me kind of bring up some of the that white in the river and in the waterfall. I just want it to not be overdone. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful with the highlights. Put that back to zero. Actually, so one of my favorite things to do is hit the J key and it will show you in red anything that's blown out and in blue anything that's completely black. We 
Well, you can see there's a lot of blue here, but there's no red. So I'm okay with all that blue. I don't really care, honestly, if those sections are completely uh, black, but I wanna bring up some of the whites and the moving water in order to just get nice visibility into that. Um, I feel like it's a little bit hot here in a couple of areas. So I'm gonna pull back slightly on the highlights. Again, it's just a delicate dance where I'm just kind of balancing things. I'm gonna hit the J key to hide the uh, that overlay. And if you look at the before and the after, you can see that's a little bit brighter and a little bit wider and crisper in the water, which I think looks pretty nice. One of the things I like to do is use Accent AI on photos. However, as I talked about in my previous uh, lengthy workflow video, which is there, I don't wanna use it across the entire image. So I'm gonna give it about a 20 or so, but I wanna be kind of specific with it. So I'm gonna go in to get a mask and I'm gonna get a radial gradient and I'm gonna draw that right in here. But then of course, I'm gonna invert it because what I really wanna do is just kind of tilt it and uh, basically center it here in kind of the center of the uh, stream or river, whatever you want to call it, in order to kind of draw attention to this central part of the image. Maybe something about like that. Let me make this a little bit longer and maybe pull that in just a little bit. There it is before and there it is after. Just gives it a nice little pop. And now that I've got that in the right place, I can come in and give that a little bit more if I want to, maybe as high as 30. Just be careful with it because Accent AI does a whole lot of things to a photo. So you just wanna be kind of careful and gentle how you're applying that, which is why I try not to go too high on the number and I try to control it with a mask so it doesn't hit the entire image. But there it is again in the center of the photo, kind of across just where the stream is coming and there it is now. Now another idea would be to close that, open it again, and then just go add a little bit of that to the waterfall so I'm going to do a, maybe a 25 and here I'm just going to do a brush and I'm just going to kind of paint that in over here. Maybe something about like that. And let me see the before and after. There it is before and there it is after. You can see that just popped that a little bit, which I think, again, creates a little bit more visibility because for me, really, the focal point here is the waterfalls coming. And of course, you can't see the whole stream, but you got this big section here in the foreground. And I really want those to pop and stand out against the rest of the photo. And now that I've done that, I'm just going to hit this with a little vignette. I think something about like that with some inner light as well. And I always tend to choose my subject. And I think my subject is going to be a little bit here, maybe there actually. I don't want it to be too low because that'll really brighten up some of the very bottom of the photo. And I'm not so concerned about that. I'm more concerned about seeing the waterfall and of course the stream. So I think right in there looks pretty good. Let's check that before and after. The other reason to place the center is because that's where the inner light is gonna originate from. The center of the inner light is basically the center of the vignette. So I choose the subject based on also where I want the inner light to be um, impacting the image. So there it is before and there it is after. And I might just lessen the amount a little bit and perhaps slightly reduce the amount of inner light. I don't want to overdo the effect, but there it is before and there it is after. And that's my whole edit, my friends. Let me show you. That's what I started with as a single exposure HDR. As you recall, the previous image, the untouched or unedited image, was then added to HDR Merge, it got a nice pop out of it, which made it look like that. And then denoise and remove spots, which cleaned up the stuff in the sky. And then various tools and filters and masks here to be very specific and targeted with my edit allowed me to really create an image that I like and that I think really stands out and catches the eye, basically shaping the light, shaping the color, shaping the detail all around the photo using different tools and masks really helps you get the job done. But for me, the key thing that really got me started on that path was single exposure dropped into HDR Merge to give it that kind of slight pop that you can get with that tone mapping algorithm that you don't always necessarily get in other tools in Luminar. That's how it worked for me in this one, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. You guys take care, and until then, adios.